Well, I kind of start. Thank you. <laughs> Do you like waiting in line? Can I see a show of hands? Do you like waiting in line for hours there? Probably you don't, right? I guess so. So this is a place that probably locals you recognize, right? Probably more often than not, you've seen it like this. This was in um, the newspaper like two weeks ago, Dea. And um, we know it is a delicate place. It's by the Bay of Biscay, San Juan de Gastelugache, but internationally has become pretty well known thanks to Game of Thrones. Um, you know it as Dragonstone, right? So it's, as it is, it's a pretty delicate place. So we have always had the well, obligation to preserve it. But now that has a lot of attention, we need to protect it even more, right? So the Council of Biscay is actually looking at limiting the amount of people that at the same time can enjoy this place. How about looking for an apartment in your own city? What if I tell you that it takes really long to find an apartment for long term in your own city, and it actually is much more expensive if tourism is developing that city? This is the amount of short-term rental apartments in Venice, according to our own data. So why? Because it's much more lucrative for landlords to rent it for a short term than a long term. No brainer, really. So what is it that I do? I travel uh, quite a lot because um, I'm often contracted by the United Nations World Tourism Organization and quite other companies and entities. And what I do for these destinations is help them plan for future tourism and for the present as well from a perspective of sustainability. But what is that? It's a pretty kind of abstract concept, sustainability, sustainable tourism. Well, let's break it into layers. Um, and before we break it into layers, we're going to look at an, a specific example for how do you feel when you get to a place, an untouched piece of paradise in Colombia, is a um, portion of the Caribbean coast of Colombia, pretty nice. People are very warm, food is um, amazing. I was there for work, actually, not a uh, pleasure. And in my hotel, I had access to fresh mineral water, and food was cooked with fresh mineral water as well, so it was safe. And I wonder, what about residents, people that live there? And what I was told by local university colleagues is that residents, locals, they rely on tap water, which is actually not always reliable. I don't know about you, but I didn't feel that good about it. So I'm in the tourism sector. I've been in the tourism sector for 13 years because I believe that tourism contributes to the well-being of people, to the residents that receive visitors. So again, what is sustainable tourism? Let me explain it in layers, as I was saying before. So we start with the territory. That's where everything happens, the environment. That's kind of a key to the uniqueness of the place. Another thing that contributes to the uniqueness is the next layer, locals, you that live in the place, residents. On top we have food, I know you're hungry, just bear with me, um, electricity, health, internet, and so on and so forth. On top we're going to have businesses, industries that create employment for all of us, and if you're developing tourism, you're going to have hotels, guides, restaurants, and so on and so forth. On top you're going to have regulations, um, education, innovation, otherwise you become obsolete, and on top you're going to have visitors, tourists, right? The key to the whole thing is that all layers are interconnected. They need to be very well managed. If you fail to manage some of them, not so well, the whole system suffers, and your residents are not going to be happy. They're going to be probably not just sad, but mad, and complain quite a lot. So why, how, actually, how do you know if you're going in the right direction? Well, you need to measure, and I need to tell you a secret. Tourism measurement is broken. It needs fixing. It often looks like this, pretty awful, right? So like 20 years ago, kind of graphs. And the data is even more worrying. Why? Because the data talks about volume, talks about the amount of people coming to a place. Not actually nothing of these data is telling you anything about how residents feel in the destination. Why? Because most of the time, how do we develop tourism? In this way, marketing. Okay, more, more people. More people that need to come to my destination. That's a goal, more and more people. But volume should not be the actual variable that we look at, okay? We should be looking at how does that affect residents and how is that affecting the well-being of people in that destination. Because if you don't do it right, this is what happens. Right? And this, 
and this, pretty close to home, right? So why do we care about tourism? And why should we care about tourism? Because it creates one in every 10 jobs, according to UN World Tourism Organization data. So that means that 50 people here will work in the tourism sector, 12.3 million people, according to Eurostat data in Europe. So should we just care about those that are working in the tourism sector? Not really. It should be good for those that are working in the tourism sector and the rest of people that will live in that city where tourism is being received, is being welcome, right? So let's do a pretty nice exercise. What if now we are all residents of Venice? How cool is that? Venice, right? Ladies, don't you imagine yourselves with those dresses, you know, when you walk and they make that soft noise? Super cool. Yeah, but it has a bit of a challenge, right, living in Venice. Uh, UNESCO actually is knocking on your door and saying, if you don't do a good job, perhaps I remove the UNESCO um, grant, right? So. The first thing we have to do is we, as residents, we call up the public administration, private businesses, and so on, and we decide, how do we want Venice to be for our grandkids? We need to think about that, and we need to plan, and we need to make it a feasible plan. Otherwise, if you don't think what kind of visitors are going to fit that plan, that plan is just you know, something that you put in a drawer. So what kind of those visitors are, are those? It's just like dating. Do you date the world? Not probably you have a type. I don't know, I'd like him to be a skydiver and bungee jumper. I'm too scared for that, but perhaps it's your type. Um, and then you need to know, how do I find him? Perhaps Tinder or Match.com or Midic? I don't know, what's the channel? You have to research who's your target, who's the actual visitor that's going to make your plan feasible, and it's going to be the benefits that you want for your grandkids. And if you're a business, because we said 50 of us are working in the tourism sector in Venice, we need to hire locals and we need to use local products so that you convince your guests during breakfast that those products that they like so much, they can buy it in the next street and you're still contributing to the economy of your city, to the well-being of others. So let's look at what other cities have done. San Francisco, where Airbnb was born, reach an agreement with Airbnb so that Airbnb gives data to San Francisco city officials on listings, capacity, and a lot of details. It's the only way that San Francisco city officials can implement the regulation, can actually go and talk to these properties and, well, collect taxes and so on and so forth. How about limiting the amount of tourism shops that you have in destinations so that you have more shops that can sell products that are produced by local artists, local artisans, whatever it is that contributes to the local economy. How about limiting again, as we did talk about San Juan de Gaselugate, the amount of people that visit the same place, Cinque Terre. Don't you wanna, if you went and visited, don't you want your grandkids to also see it the same way you saw it, or even better, but certainly not worse? The same for these islands of Phuket. Next idea, taxes. How do you feel when you travel from London to Bhutan? You pay $2,000 to get there, and you get there, and they tell you, we're going to ask you $65 per person per night to pay for free education, free health care, poverty alleviation, and building infrastructures we need. Are you going to say no, or just go back to my country? Not really. Don't you want to contribute to the country? that you're visiting, probably if you pay that much money and you endure quite a long flight, it's because you actually like it, right? So don't you want to contribute to it being a better place for them, but also for your grandkids to still see it the way it is or even better? It's the same idea, right? And how about looking into waiting in line? You said you don't like waiting in line. So I am sort of decided, OK, let's do a pilot where people can go on the website. Let's imagine we're in Amsterdam. We want to see Anne Frank's museum. And there, you look in the website and it says, three hours waiting in line. OK, not really, not the good plan. So let's look for alternatives. And this site will tell you alternatives. And this is such a good example of how you can move people from decon so congested areas to less congested areas, they enjoy, they feel smart about their choice because they actually had a choice, and you move people and decongest your own city. And how about changing marketing? A stop about going on the press and saying, oh, a new record of visitors. No. Barcelona said, okay, your holidays are every day. You're putting the residents at the focus of visitors, but also residents feel that they are the focus also of tourism officials as well.
So resonance become part of the process. What am I asking you to do or to change when you travel? This. Put yourself in the shoes of the resident. So think as a resident when you travel. Be respectful of cultural resources, natural resources. Talk to locals. Put a face to the place you're visiting. That's the way tourism contributes building tolerance, because you put faces to destinations and countries and cities. And, well, buy local products. Don't buy products that say, made in <clears throat> another country, right? <laughs> Don't buy wildlife products. No joke there. And care about the destination you're visiting. Okay, so be smart, be sustainable, be inclusive. Thank you very much. Thank you.